Praise God. That's uh, something we even talked about last week about taking that opportunity to pray with people. Right then, don't wait. Don't just say, oh, I'll pray for you and then just walk away and forget. But truly reach out to people and pray for them and seek to make a difference in their lives. That's what this, this life of faith is all about, right? Praise God. How many watched the news this week? Anybody? Is anybody surprised by the news this week? Was anybody, did fear grip anybody after the news this week? As many of you probably know, if you did watch the news, some horrific things happened this week in Oregon. And Christians were singled out. People were asked if they were a Christian to stand up. And then when they stood up, they were shot. They were shot down. Now, I know that this can do one of two things inside of you. This can cause fear and cause you to turn away. It can cause you to think, man, if this is, the, if this is what can happen, I don't know if, I, if I'm ready for that. I don't know if I can stand for that. Or you could say, you know what? Because that happened in Oregon, I need to build my endurance. I need, I need my endurance built up. Because right now, I ran a sprint, I'm out of breath, and I don't know if somebody came into this church building even and said, hey, if you believe in Jesus, I'm going to shoot you if I can stand up. Wow. I know we don't want to think about that, right? None of us want to think about that. I don't want to think about that. You know, I know that there's some churches out there today that have security guards right at the door checking people. There's probably some people that have metal detectors that they have to walk through to come to church. I'm not saying that those things are wrong, but it's not going to happen here. We're not going to let fear rule our, rule, fear rule our lives, right? Here's what I do know. If any of those people that stood up and said, I confess Jesus, I know where they're at today. Amen? Amen. Okay, yeah, they left this earth. Some people may say, man, yeah, but they, they're, they're no longer alive. And some other people may say, yeah, they're no longer here. Hallelujah, praise God, right? I'm telling you. I think we're, I hope we were all looking forward to the day. Some of us may, I know, that, I know we all have those, those things that we say to God and we say, oh God, just let me do this first. Or God, let me do that first. Let me see my grandchildren first. But you know, God's plan is perfect. Right? I don't always understand it. I don't get to understand it a lot of the times. But I trust Him. But I want to share with you, because I, I believe that this is a place where we all need to come to. And we've been talking about faith and, and all these things. And this week we're going to be talking about enduring faith. Okay, enduring faith, because this is, faith is not something that is for the weak-minded, right? It's not something that's for the weak of heart. This faith that we're living is going to take everything that we have. It's going to take all of us, right? And so it's not going to be easy. But I'm telling you, it's going to be worth it. But I want to share with you how we attain endurance. How we attain endurance. Endurance. And some of you may, after I get done reading, you may think, eh, I'm not really that big a fan of endurance. <laughs> I don't know if I really want that after all. But it says in James chapter 1, it says, it says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance is has a chance to grow. That's good stuff right there. I'm telling you. Ain't nobody here. I know nobody here likes the test. Right? Nobody here likes the test. But it says, and then 
verse 4 says, so let it grow. Let it grow. Not let it go. <laughs> let it grow. <laughs> For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. You know, I, I believe that the people that stood up and said, I, I'm a Christian, their endurance completely developed that day. Amen. They're perfect and complete, needing nothing now. Woo, Woo man. <laughs> Is that good news for them? Yes. Yeah. Let's go. I'd like to tell you that, you know what, things are going to get better from, from here. But that's why we're going to talk about endurance, because I don't believe that they are. You know, if you were watching the middle side, it said, don't pray for an easy life. Pray for strength to face a difficult one. Right? So often we pray for all our troubles to go away, all our difficulties to, to just stop. But that's never going to happen, is it? Why? Because we live in a fallen world. We live in a world where there are trials, where there are difficulties. But Jesus said this. In this world you will have trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. So we don't, have to, we don't have to walk through this life fearful. We don't have to walk through this life worried. We don't have to walk through this life depressed and down. But we walk through this life with endurance, knowing who we serve and knowing where we're going. Amen. Praise God. That wasn't even on my notes. You just got that for free today. <laughs> Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles, we're going to go back to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Starting at verse 1, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with, everybody say it together, endurance. The race God has set before us. We, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion. Everybody say that today. Jesus, the champion. Jesus, the champion. Who initiates and perfects our faith because of the joy awaiting him, he endured. Did you hear that? He endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you, will be, you won't become weary and give up. After all, you have not yet given your lives in your struggle against sin. All right. There was another slide up here, right in the middle. It said, winners are not those who never fail, but those who never give up. I want to be a winner. Okay, I want to win. Some people would think, man, it's so tragic for those people that got shot and now they're dead and you know, who heard about the vet, too, that just charged the guy with the gun? Got shot seven times. Yeah. He was a vet, got shot seven times. Pretty much is the reason why the shooter got taken out. Pretty amazing stuff, right? But he actually lived through that as well. Yeah. But it says that we run with endurance. This is what endurance is. The fact or power of enduring an unpleasant or difficult process or situation without giving way. That means standing your ground. Okay? You're not giving up. You're not giving in. You're not giving way to the enemy. You're standing your ground. You're enduring through it all. Right? There's a great song by Andre Crouch called Through It All. Man, I like that song very, very much. Very, very good. Through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God through it all. And that's exactly what these, these struggles, these difficulties should be pushing us to. is trust and faithfulness to Christ. They shouldn't be pushing us away from who He is. But here's the thing about endurance. When, usually when you need endurance is when you can't see the end in sight. Right? You saw the picture of the people running. When these people running a marathon. Okay, 26.2 miles. Okay, when you are at the starting line, you cannot see the finish line. Right? But nevertheless, they still start running. Hoping to reach the finish. But with endurance, you can never see the end. And so you think, oh, but we can see the end, can't we? We know where the end is. Jesus knew where the end was. Right? Yeah. Jesus knew that his end was at the right hand of the Father. Our 
right? We, we forget about the end. But sometimes it's like we're in the first round of a 12-round fight. It's like, is this thing ever going to be over? Those minute rounds seem like an eternity in themselves, right? But we must not give up. I would reference my favorite movie again, but you know, you guys know what it is. It's Rocky, and I'm telling you it's awesome because it's all about endurance. It's all about sticking in there and being faithful to the very end. You see, we've all been in places in our lives where we have to settle in and do some enduring. Some have taken the challenge of enduring and some have given up in the midst. But here I want to, I want to explain something to everybody here today. The testimony doesn't come without the test. The message doesn't come without the mess. Right? Victory never comes without a fight. We all these things we must go through in order to get what we where we're going to be able, to be able to attain the prize that Jesus has for us. I ask you this question: What if you what you are enduring is going to be a message that is going to encourage, uplift, or set free someone else that is trying to endure today? Are you okay with going through some difficulty if it means that somebody else is going to be set free because of the difficulty that you went through? I have, to, I have to share about my wife this morning. I love this woman. She went through some pretty horrific, horrific things in her young childhood. I know she has shared that testimony with m most of you. But from the age of 9 to 14, she was sexually abused by her stepbrother. And she went through this. And really, it didn't stop at 14, the pain and the hurt and the, all, the, all the things that she was going through. But all the way until she was in high school, she was still carrying this stuff around. And actually, even into Bible college, she still carried this stuff around. And it was in, I was got to be there the day. I got to be there the day that Jesus set her free from the pain, from the hurt, from the unforgiveness, from all the junk that that, that tragic stuff brought into her life. I got to be there the day that Jesus set her free it was, just, it was an amazing, amazing moment in one of our chapels in Bible College. But she went through all that, and yet she, here she is today, serving, loving, choosing Jesus every single day, day in and day out. She endured through all that. She endured. It was a difficult road, a difficult track, but she endured. And because of her endurance, she was able to meet with a young lady this week that has suffered some similar things that she suffered and was able to speak life into her and able to say, you know what, you can do this. Don't give up. Keep running. Keep going. And she was able to pour into this girl's life and show her that there's still hope. There's still hope. We don't have to quit running just because something bad happens to us. So I just give God praise for that. I'm telling you, that's where endurance happens is in those hard times, in those difficult times. I thank my wife for allowing me to share that this morning because I did ask her permission. I want to share just a few more stories. This, is, this one isn't in the Bible, but it's, it's a story that, of a man. He lived in Romania in the, in the 20th century. And, and Russia was a communist country, right? And Christians were not looked at very kindly. Matter of fact, most of them, if they heard you preaching the gospel in public, or they heard you preaching something other than what the government wanted, they would throw you in prison. And they would leave you there to rot, to be tortured, to do all these things. And there was a man by the name of Richard Wormbrand that wrote a book called Torture for Christ. And he was in these prisons for about 13 years altogether. He was in there for 8 years 
And then he got out for two years and continued preaching the gospel. And then finally they came and they threw him back in. But I want to share a couple of excerpts out of a book that he actually wrote called Torture for Christ. Here's one of them. It says, a pastor by the name of Rescue was tortured with red-hot iron pokers <coughs> and with knives. He was beaten very badly. Then starving rats were driven into a cell through a large pipe. He could not sleep because he had to defend himself all the time. If he rested a moment, the rats would attack him. He was forced to stand for two weeks, day and night. The communists wished to compel him to betray his brethren, but he resisted steadfastly. Eventually, they brought his 14-year-old son to the prison and began to whip the boy in front of his father. Saying that they would continue to beat him until the pastor said, that they said what they wished him to say. The poor man was half mad. He bored as long as he could, then he cried out to his son, Alexander! I must say what they want. I can't bear your beating anymore. The son answered, Father, don't do me the injustice of having a traitor as a parent. Wow. Withstand, he told his dad. If they kill me, I will die with the words, Jesus and my fatherland. The communist, enraged, fell upon the child and beat him to death with blood spattered over the walls of the cell. He died praising God. Our dear brother Foresky was never the same after seeing this. What? Well, Think about this. These people, he knew, his, the father knew, the son knew, hey, this is not the end for me. Even at 14 years old, he was willing to endure I know none of us want to think about these. None of us want to, to want to even consider these things, or especially them happening here, right? We don't want to think about those things happening here in the United States. Another story says, It was strictly forbidden to preach to other prisoners, as it is in captive nations today. It was understood that whoever was caught doing this received a severe beating. A number of us decided to pay the price for the privilege of preaching. So we accepted their terms. It was a deal. We preached and they beat us. We were happy preaching and they were happy beating us. So everybody was happy. It's one way to look at it, right? The following scene happened more times than I can remember. A brother was preaching to the other prisoners when the guard suddenly burst in, surprising him halfway through a phrase. They hauled him down the corridor to their beating room. After what seemed an endless beating, they brought him back and threw him, bloody and bruised, on the prison floor. Slowly, he picked up his battered body, painfully st straightened his clothing, and said, Now, brethren, where did I leave off when I was interrupted? And he continued his gospel message. <laughs> That's amazing, right? That's what endurance looks like. Right there. It's not giving up. Not, you know, I, I love that. We traded. We just, okay, they like beating us. We like preaching the gospel. You know what? Preaching the gospel is more important to us than our own physical. Wow. Amazing. So I ask this question. What will it take for us to quit on Jesus? What will it take for us to say, Jesus, I can't do this anymore? What? Where is our breaking point? I hope you don't have one. I hope you have said, I am in this for the long haul. No matter what happens, no matter what comes my way, Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Savior. I will not turn back. I have decided to follow Christ. The cross before me, the world behind me. No turning back. No turning back. Amen. I hope that is your prayer. I hope that is the intentions of your heart today. See, because we don't know what happens in the mix. We don't know who it's going to touch when we endure, right? You remember Stephen? He was preaching the gospel message. He was telling people about Jesus, and they stoned him to death. They threw rocks at him until he was dead. But who was standing there? Stephen was willing to suffer so that Paul could hear the message. Of Jesus Christ. 
See, so many times we just think about the suffering, we think about the pain, we never think about how Jesus can use the pain, can use the suffering to touch someone else's life. You see, the thing is, is we've already attained, we've already received Christ, we're, we're looking forward to eternity, right? But there's people that have it. And I know as much as we don't want to endure some days, as much as we want to throw in the towel some days, as much as we want to give up some days, we can't do it. Because it's not just our lives that are going to be impacted and are going to be influenced because of us giving up. I want you to know your hardships, your difficulties are not in vain. They're not in vain. You're not doing them for no reason. You're not going through these things, these struggles for no reason. God has a plan. Amen. Noah built a boat for 120 years in the, in the desert, right? With no, no water around. But he, but he endured. With people ridiculing him, telling him, what are you doing? But he endured. And what, why? So because he endured, what happened? He saved him and his family from the flood. He probably didn't know. At the time, he's like, I don't know what this is going to look like. He's like, I don't need to know what it's going to look like. I just need to get in the boat. I need to be obedient. Yeah. Right? I need to be obedient. Moses walked out of Egypt with the children of Israel. But it wasn't before he had to face Pharaoh ten times. Right? He had to stand in front of him and say, let my people go. But he continued to do it. He continued to endure until the people, of e the people of Israel were walking out of Egypt. Were walking out of bondage. I want to share with you this morning about our Master and our Savior. And how He endured for us. Like I said, your suffering and your, your, the things that you do are not in vain. There's a purpose. Some of you have testimonies that you can share with people and it speaks life into them. Lisa didn't share this testimony. Can I share that? Can I share that? We had, she put up on the wall that she needed, she needed help with a job, with, with business. And God blessed her with that this week. God bless her with that. She starts on Monday. Tomorrow. Yes. And it was, I think it was exceedingly abundantly above everything you could ask or think. Yeah. That's how God works. Okay. But she had to embed, endure some things along that road, didn't you? Before you got to the victory. Before you got to attain what, to attain the job that she got. Right? But because she stayed and she was steadfast and she endured, here she is today. Right? I'm telling you, that's, that's the amazing thing. Now she's going to be able to encourage. She's going to be able to speak life into somebody else that may be struggling, that may be needing help and needing a job, needing financial stability. She is going to be able to speak into their lives and say, hey, God is faithful. Let me share with you what God did in my life. See, that's the amazing thing is we get to share if we remain silent, if we go through our struggles, then we remain silent, then maybe it is in vain. Because God, God allowed those sufferings and allowed those struggles so you could proclaim Him in the end. The Bible says this in Revelation chapter 12, that we are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And it says they love their lives not, they didn't love their lives enough more than dying, Right? They died rather than lived. This was talking about the people that overcame. They didn't love their lives so much they weren't willing to die for Christ. So, if we want to be overcomers, if we want to endure, then we're going to have to get the blood of Jesus. And we sang about that this morning. The blood of Jesus. And we're going to have to start testifying of all the goodness of God. Amen? Yes, amen. Don't let your testimony go without being spoken. Luke chapter 22. We're going to talk just a, a briefly about this this morning. We may not even get through all this, but we're going to start here. Luke chapter 22. 
should come up on the screen here momentarily. Here's Jesus. Verse 41, it says, He walked away about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed. Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then an angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him. He prayed more fervently, and he was in such agony of spirit that his sweat fell to the ground like great drops of blood. At last he stood up again and returned to the disciples, only to find them asleep, exhausted from grief. Why are you sleeping, he asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not give in to temptation. Get up and pray so you will not give in to temptation. Jesus prayed probably one of the hardest prayers that has ever been prayed. Right? I don't know if you've ever gone in your prayer closet and said, Lord, I really want this struggle to end, but not my will, but yours be done. And then you left your prayer closet and the struggle was still there. And you're like, ugh. I was really hoping your will was something different, God. <laughs> I was really hoping that this was not your will. That this was Jesus' prayer. And I know many of us don't like praying this. God, your will be done. God, let your will be done in my life. Because sometimes it doesn't mean deliverance. Sometimes it doesn't mean freedom right then. It means pain. It means suffering. And I know us as, us as believers, especially as American Christians, we don't like to talk about suffering. We like to talk about blessing and, and prosperity and all this other good stuff. But the gospel is all about suffering, isn't it? Yes. Jesus put it this way. He said, if the world hated me, it's going to hate you too. But Jesus, I don't like to be hated. I don't. I don't like to be hated. I like, to think, I like people to look favorably upon me. But does that mean everybody's going to look favorably upon me? Nope. Not especially when I choose to stand up for the truth. Especially when I choose to voice the, the voice of the Lord. Right? It's not always going to be pleasant. It's not always going to be a great outcome. You see, it's all about taking the brutality of what is about to happen to me and making something beautiful out of it. Isn't that what God does? Okay, I'm sure when the people were watching Jesus hang on the cross, watching him get beat, watching him go through what he's going through, they were like, man, why is this happening? Why does this have to happen? But then they got to see the end, right? They got to see him back, back to life. Sure, he still had wounds in his hand, but he was walking around no more blood. I mean, he was walking around greeting them, telling them, that they need to go out and preach the good news, right? You see, here's the thing about the will of God. The will of God changes the world. Amen? The will of God changes the world. What Jesus did was life-changing. Was it not? It was world-changing. Okay, there is nobody that has had more of an impact on the world than Jesus Christ. Nobody. Okay, so when I say your will be done, Lord, it changes the world. When I am more desirable of my own personal comfort, it just changes me. It just helps me. So what am I more interested in? Am I more interested in changing the world or just me being comfortable? If Jesus would have been about him being comfortable, man, at any moment he could have he said, angels, come and rescue me. Take me up to the right hand of the Father now. I don't want to go through this pain. At any time, he said he could have done that. But he didn't. He had emotional endurance. Some of us struggle with emotional endurance, right? Some of us, the emotions just get too heavy, get too overwhelming that we just... We want to just like, ugh, pull our hair out, right? Jesus, in Luke chapter 12, 22, verse 63, it says, 
the guards in charge of Jesus began mocking and beating him. They blindfolded him and said, prophesy to us. Who hit you that time? And they hurled all sorts of terrible insults at him. Think about this. These people, these people that were following him, I'm sure there were some followers. Some, some of the 5,000 we fed loaves and fish to some people that were there. And he was, he, he looked at them as a pastor, as a shepherd. And now, and now they're hurling insults at him. And now they're saying, oh, who is that who prophesied to us, oh, mighty son of God? And they're mocking him. I don't know about you, but if that was me, I would think, man, God, why? Why are you making me go through this? Why is this happening? Right? And isn't that what we do all the time? In the middle of that suffering, we're just like, God, why? We wonder. We wonder why. But you see, Jesus knew this. He, he knew that there was a greatest, greater purpose to be fulfilled. And I think if we all, in the middle of our suffering, in the middle of our trials, in the middle of our difficulties, if we all realize that there's a greater purpose to be fulfilled in our lives through those things because God's trying to give us the endurance to stand no matter what, then I, I believe that we'd be able to endure more, right? But it says God will take all of this and bring about good from this. There are times when we struggle emotionally with how people treat us and what other people think of us. But we must know who we are in Christ and not be swayed by the opinion of man. Are you being swayed today? You know, we watched a video yesterday in band meeting. And this dad knew his son was down at the bar. And the mom came up to him and said, you need to go down there and get him. He has work at 7 o'clock in the morning, and he needs to be home so he can get a good rest, so he can be on time for work. Now, this guy, now, I want you to understand, this guy was 26 years old, okay? He really didn't need his dad coming to get him, okay? He needed to take responsibility for who he was. But his dad gets down there, and when he gets down there, instead of, instead of enduring and doing what he knows to do, he just joins in with what his son is doing. His son was gambling when he got there, gambling on a pool game and doing that, and he just kind of jumped right in. He, his son handed him a beer and said, here, Dad. You know, I, I think about those things, and it's like, here's, here's what happens. When we don't choose to endure, we compromise. When we don't choose to endure, we compromise. You see, Jesus could have compromised. I know y'all I know y'all are thinking, well, he was the Son of God. I'm telling you, he had the same flesh, had the same amount of feelings that I have in my body. He could feel every ounce of pain that was being given to him. He could hear every word piercing his mind and his, his heart when those people were mocking him and ridiculing him. He could hear it all. And then it says, it says, and, and then now enduring mockery. It says in Mark chapter 15, it says the soldiers took Jesus into the courtyard of the governor's headquarters and called out the entire regiment. They dressed him in a purple robe and they wove thorn branches into a crown and put it on his head. Then they saluted him and taunted him, Hail, King of the Jews. And they struck him on the head with a reed stick, spit on him, and dropped to their knees in mockery worship. In mock worship. When they were finally tired of mocking him, when they were finally tired of mocking him, it doesn't say when Jesus finally gave up. It says when they were finally tired of mocking him, but Jesus endured it all. When they were finally tired, they led him away to be crucified. Wow. Wow, they're done mocking, now, mocking me. Now I get to go and hang on a cross. What a, what a, great, what a great victory there, right? But see, this isn't about... What Jesus, as much as Jesus went through, but about where, what, was, what it was going to do because he went through it, right? How many are thankful that Jesus didn't stop, that Jesus didn't stop enduring? I'm very thankful today. Because he didn't stop enduring, we're here. We're saved. 
We're, we, are, we have attained eternity as we live for Christ and reject ourselves and reject sin, right? And then enduring denial. Here's Jesus standing here in front of everybody and Barabbas is standing right next to him and they said, who do you guys want us to release? We'll release one prisoner to you. And they said, give us Barabbas! Give us Barabbas! We want Barabbas to be set free. Well, what should I do with Jesus, the Nazarene, the, the king of the Jews? Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! Right? All these people that were shouting, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Now being denied. Crucify him. Crucify him. <coughs> Have you ever been in a place where people once confessed their love for you and followed you and then rejected you? You ever been there? Sadly, this happens a lot in ministry. You hear people say, I love you. You hear people say, I'm so grateful for you. And then they reject you. They leave. They walk away. But Jesus, here's what I love about Jesus. Is Jesus was not like the people that were yelling crucified. You know what Jesus did? Jesus returned love to them. Jesus did not return anger to them. Jesus did not return hate to them. He returned love to them. That's what Jesus did. That's who I want to be. That's what endurance looks like. Okay? That's what endurance looks like. When you are going through the suffering, people are yelling out, crucify them, kill them, and you're loving them. That's what endurance looks like. And then, of course, he went and he hung on the cross. And really... I know that all the pictures we see of Jesus, it shows him wearing a cloth over his, this area. But really in, in history, if you'll read history, it actually shows that most people that were crucified in this way, in the Roman culture, they were actually stripped completely naked. Shame. I'm talking complete shame. They wanted to shame them completely. And not only was he hanging on the cross, not only were they mocking him still as he hung on that cross. But he was also completely shamed by being completely exposed. Horrible, horrible thing. But Jesus endured every ounce of that humiliating moment. He endured it all. He endured all the way until he got every prophecy spoken. Right? I mean, come on. This is what Jesus was willing to do. So I ask you this question, have you ever been publicly ridiculed and made fun of by everyone around you? Has it made you want to quit? Or has it made you want to love even more? Church, I, I want to encourage you today that when you're going through difficulty, when you're going through struggles, when you're facing harsh people, don't quit. Love. Love. This is a world that is going down the tubes fast. I'm telling you, this world is falling apart. You'll probably only hear about what happened in Oregon for about a week because it was Christians. If it was Muslims, if it was anybody else, we'd hear about it for forever. About the hate that, that the Christian church has for people. Right? Because this is, this, is what, this is where this country is going. No love for the church. Even though without the church, this, this country would fail. The government doesn't have any clue how much money they'd be spending if it wasn't for the church. Right? So I ask you this. I ask you to endure to the finish. I ask you not to quit, but I ask you to love... I ask you to love all the way to the end. 
Just as Jesus did when he said in John chapter 19 and verse 28. Jesus knew that his mission was now finished. And to fulfill scripture he said, I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting there. So they soaked a sponge in it. Put it on a hyssop branch. And helped it up to his lips. When Jesus tasted it, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and released his spirit. Jesus went all the way to death. Jesus went all the way to the cross. Jesus went all the way to the nails. Jesus went all the way to the beating. Jesus went all the way to the mockery. Jesus went all the way to the humiliation. He endured it all. And now he, he, let, he did it to leave an example for every single one of us that are still here on this earth. For us to endure to the very end. Not to give up, but to persevere. And say, Lord, I'm in this. So the question is this. How far are you willing to go? If it means death. If it means suffering. If it means ridicule. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 32 says this. If you'll confess me before man, I'll confess you before my Father in heaven. But if you deny me before man, I will deny you before my Father in heaven. I know, this, I know this has been very heavy this morning. But I, I truly believe that God is calling us to endure. God is calling the church to be a place of endurance, a place that will, that will thrive. Jesus even said, He said, when the end, the end comes, those who endure to the end will be saved, right? Those who endure to the end will be saved. But I want to remind you, every disciple gave their lives to the cause of Christ. If we don't think suffering is something that Christianity is supposed to have a part of, we think it's just supposed to be blessing and prosperity, then don't read the book of Acts. Okay? Because you're going to be delusion. You're gonna, you're gonna, your eyes are going to be open. You're going to be like, oh, wow. Suffering and persecution is real. And I can't actually experience it because I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, every single one of them died there. And we, we, you can read about martyrs in the Fox's Book of Martyrs all throughout history. You can read about them in the book called Jesus Freak. You can read about all these people that gave their life for the sake of Christ. People that were beaten for the sake of Christ. But you know why they were able to go through with what they went through? Because their love for Christ was greater than their love for living. Their love for Christ was greater than their love for living. Have we gotten there, church? Have we gotten to that place? Because I'm telling you, it's not going to get any easier for us. I hope this is encouraging you because you have the opportunity to choose endurance. You have the opportunity to choose endurance today. You guys have that opportunity. And we're going to make a declaration this morning. <coughs> And I want this to come from deep within your heart. Because again, this is a choice only you can make. I can't make you run the race in endurance, but you know what? I want you to understand something. I want you to understand something this morning. I'm going to run right beside you. I'm going to run. I'm going to encourage you along the way. I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to grab you by the hand when you start to slow down. I'm going to grab you. I'm going to say, hey, come on. Keep on. Come on. Don't give up. Don't give up. You got, you got more in you. You got more in you. Jesus wants to do more in you. Amen. I'm not going to let you fall. I'm not going to let you let you stop. I'm going to keep on. We're going we're gonna to keep on prodding each other. When I look like I'm going to give up, I expect you to come alongside me and say, come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. Keep on going. Keep on going. Don't give up. Don't give in. We are called to endure. We're called to have faith to the final moment of our lives. Are you in? Are you in? No matter what it means, are you in? I'm telling you, Jesus. Ooh, Jesus. Jesus did it. And I believe we can do it. worship team is going to lead us in this song. I want you to proclaim it with your heart. And I want you to really sing it like you mean it this morning. I want you to trust.
and believe Jesus today. Stand with us this morning. Oh, 